Hey guys, what's good? It's the Tominator. And not too long ago, Barry DeMay posted some footage of the 1988 Olympia onto his Instagram. It was him, Rich Gaspari, and Lee Haney in the prejudging top callout, and Barry placed third at this show. I was impressed with the footage, which actually showed some decent comparisons without all the unnecessary zooming and panning around you so often see today. So I figured, why not take this opportunity to do a review? I've already covered most of the 90s contests, but this will be my first real in-depth venture into the 80s, mainly because footage and pictures are so scarce from back then. But these are some guys I haven't really compared all that much, so let's take a little walk down memory lane, shall we? And check out the state of bodybuilding over 30 years ago. So in the front double by, Haney is smoking him. The proportions on this guy were just unreal. It's like his upper body practically explodes out of that tiny waist like a genie bursting out the bottle. His huge lats, chest, and arms really make this shot for him. And his V-taper can't be topped by anyone here, except maybe by Brian Buchanan, who we'll see a little later on. I'd have Rich Gaspari solidly in second because of his greater mass and thickness compared to Barry DeMay. Both are in good condition, and DeMay has a more streamlined, athletic look with all that height but he's a little too slim by bodybuilding standards in my opinion. Still, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind having a body like that. Haney also cleans up in the front lat spread. Again, he's just got too much width and fullness through the lats, and his taper's too good for these guys. It's really a no-brainer. As for second, I'd still lean towards Rich because his legs are better, and he exhibits a denser, more filled-out look through the arms, delts, and pecs. Neither one of them present a super impressive V-taper, however, especially standing next to Haney. And as we shift into the side chest, look at Lee and Rich flexing on him. I thought Kevin Lavroni was the first to do that move, but apparently he didn't invent it after all. He just kind of played it up a little more, I guess. And yeah, this one's a little closer now, but I'd still give it to Lee. Gaspari looks good too, but I'm picking out a bit more detail on Haney's body, like in the near peck and also that nice split running all the way down the side of his thigh. Gaspari's pretty close in terms of thickness, though, despite giving up a couple inches. DeMay's a distant third for me here because he's simply too slim, and his chest looks very flat compared to these two. Turning around, we start to see some noticeable differences begin to emerge. Gaspari has those trademark shredded glutes, Haney's got those massive hanging lats, and DeMay is breaking out that world-famous Christmas tree one of his defining features. It's easily one of the best lower backs in history, along with Dorian Yates, Samir Banu, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you can see how damn low Lee Haney's lats insert right here. They remind me a lot of Kai Greens, actually. And it's probably no coincidence that they both have some of the best backs of all time with muscle insertions like that. Unfortunately for Barry, once they actually get into the back double, he doesn't have the upper back to match, and he gets outgunned by Haney whose back, shoulders, and arms look absolutely immense. Wow. That upper body would be almost unbeatable, even by today's standards. But the problem is that his lower body doesn't hold up. Lee's legs look positively dainty compared to his upper half. So it has to be said, the balance from top to bottom is way off here. Now, partly that's the result, I think, of the narrow stance he's adopted, with the toes pointing in slightly. That's going to completely detract from any outer quad sweep, which, yes, you can still see from the rear if you pose properly and have sufficient development. But as it is, I think Haney's doing himself a disservice because from the front, his legs measure up just fine, and I don't think we can blame all of this on lousy hamstrings. Although compared to Rich and Barry, Haney does seem to have the worst hamstrings here. Rich Gaspari actually had the best lower body in the show, uh, at least among the guys I've seen, especially when we factor in the glutes and calves. And he presents some very good back thickness and detail. He's definitely more balanced and better conditioned than Haney overall, but I'd still give the pose to Lee for that world-class back and his superior taper, which is evident even here. Barry DeMay looks classic to a T with that tilted stance, but again, he's giving up too much muscularity. Okay, and moving on to the back lat spread, Haney's about to put him away again. Those lats are just too much. They're overpowering. Gaspari fares much worse here because unlike the back double, he no longer shows much detail and he doesn't have the width to hang with Haney. 
I'd still probably give him the nod over to May because of his better lower body conditioning, but Barry's back arguably looks a bit better now than Rich's. Haney still takes the pose easily, but you can practically flip a coin for second place. Side triceps. Now, there's a beautiful shot for Lee Haney, one of his signature poses if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if he invented that one, but he was certainly one of the best to ever do it. Flex Wheeler and Kai Green would later go on to emulate it. But as for his actual side triceps, I'm honestly a little disappointed. Haney doesn't really hold it, and I'm not a fan of the way he keeps pumping his arm like that, as it's tough to properly see the pose. I'd actually give this one to Rich Gaspari, if only for better execution. But Rich has a ton of thickness and a very meaty looking horseshoe in that tricep. His pecs and sunken stomach complete the effect. So yeah, I'd give him the nod. DeMay is again too slight and lacking in thickness to stand next to these two. He does have a highly chiseled core, I'll give him that, but it's not going to be enough. Okay, and finally we've got the ab and thigh. For those of you who weren't aware, the most muscular wasn't mandatory back then, so this is the last compulsory pose. And here's another win for Gaspari. You can really tell by this point that he has the best legs in this lineup, including the quads. Rich has also got an excellent set of abs and decent flair through the lats here. Haney looks solid, but not nearly as impressive as some of his other shots. His midsection has good definition, but doesn't look as small as it did earlier in, say, the front double biceps. And his quads might actually be the weakest of the three, because berries are looking pretty good right now. I would still have Demay in third, though, because he doesn't have that nice width through the lats and pecs like Haney. So the end result is that his torso looks a little too narrow and elongated. But he's pushing Lee harder here probably than in any other pose. Okay, so that was the first look at our top callout. Let's check out a couple more names now. So they've swapped out Rich Gaspari for Gary Stridham, and I'm going to go through this a little quicker since we've seen two-thirds of this lineup go through the rounds already. But let me just pause it right now because that has got to be the best hands class most muscular ever. At least until Kevin Lavroni came onto the scene. I don't know about you, but I always assume Lavroni kind of invented that pose, but obviously not, because here's Stridham busting it out several years before Kevin even turned pro. And Haney's doing it too. Well, what do you know? I guess Lavroni didn't invent it after all, but he certainly perfected it. Anyway, in the front double biceps, Haney's still killing him. Stridham looks like a slightly older, more mature version of DeMay here. He's definitely packing a bit more muscle upstairs, but still not even close to taking out Haney. I suspect he'll prove no match in the front lat spread either, and sure enough, nope. Not quite, but better than I thought to be honest. His shoulders are nice and capped, and his pecs and triceps have some good pop to them, but the lats fall a bit short. I do like Gary's quads though, they've got excellent development down there by the knee. His legs are better than Haney's. And moving into the side chest, you can see that that holds true from this angle also. He's displaying a pretty good glute ham tie-in, which wasn't as common back in those days. And holy cow, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention how much better Barry DeMay looks this time around. That side chest is nasty. He looks so much fuller and bigger now than he did before. It's almost like two different bodybuilders. It's amazing how subtle changes in angle can make all the difference. I might even have him winning the pose now, but let's wait until these guys get into it. Okay, there's Haney pulling off the Lavroni signature shot yet again, and doing a pretty damn good job of it, I might add. Alright, these two are finally hitting it, but of course, Barry is now transitioning out, so we don't get a proper comparison. You gotta wonder, how do these judges even score this thing when they're not even hitting the pose at the same time? How do you compare? It really makes you wonder how much they're really paying attention, or if they've already made up their minds at this point. So between Haney and Stridham, I tell you what, I'm going with Stridham all the way. He looks significantly bigger through the pecs, and even if his delts aren't as big, they're very separated and have a nice round shape to them, as do his arms, which are right on par with Haney's here. Plus I'd give a slight edge to Gary in the lower body as well. Haney still has that deep split, but Stridham's got a bit more quad sweep to the front, plus better calves. So yeah, he upsets Haney in the side chest. But so much for his moment in the sun, because when they turn around, he gets absolutely demolished. Yeah, he's got a better lower body with those striated glutes and big ol' calves, but that won't save him, because when we go upstairs, it's lights out, game over. You'll see in a second when they finally get into it. 
And yeah, there you go. It's like a man versus boys. Striden's execution was excellent in the first three poses, but here it's terrible. He's making a glaring rookie mistake of retracting his scapula, which makes the traps appear thicker, but at the cost of sacrificing all lat width. Congratulations, you just made yourself look skinny as a toothpick standing next to Lee. There's even a picture in the magazines kind of poking fun at how bad Gary's getting owned in this shot. Alright, and to literally no one's surprise, the lat spread goes to Lee. Take your pick between Barry and Gary. <laughs> that sounds like it could be the name of some old cheesy sitcom or something. Barry and Gary. But anyway, my vote goes to Barry. Let's see if Stridum can be competitive again from the side, though. And yeah, he looks okay. I was honestly expecting better given how great he looked in the side chest. But here in the side try, I'm thoroughly underwhelmed. He doesn't appear crazy thick like he did earlier, and his arm doesn't even look that big, so no, he does not beat Lee in this one. He might still beat Barry, though. It's close there. Abinthai, and I don't know, it's tough to say, what with the camera moving all over the place. Either way, I think it's pretty clear by this point that Stridum isn't knocking out the champ. Though you could make an argument for him placing ahead of Demay, even though that's not what happened, of course. Gary Stridum wound up taking fifth after fourth place Lee Labrada, and as we'll see in a moment, I think that's a fair decision because Labrada was more balanced and polished on the whole. Okay, and the last callout I want to show you featured Brian Buchanan, Rich Gaspari, and as noted, Lee Labrada. I found this one really interesting because this is the first time I've actually seen Buchanan being compared. Until now, it's always just been solo photos of him hitting front double biceps or amazing stomach vacuums. So it's often sobering to see these guys who look so incredible on their own when they're matched up next to some of the top bodybuilders in the world. And for the record, Buchanan placed seventh here. Now, if that seems a little low, consider the fact that he beat the likes of Bob Paris, Samir Banu, and rookie Sean Ray. Not too shabby. In the front double biceps, this has got to go to Brian. He looks almost like an exaggerated version of Haney here, with an even tinier waist and an even more pronounced vacuum. Plus, his arms are better than Haney's too, with higher biceps peaks and more triceps sweep. This is glorious, guys. So far, he's definitely living up to the hype. As for the others, take your pick between Labrada and Gaspari. Lee looks like a friggin' cartoon character with that super cinched in waistline and massive arms, but Gaspari is clearly denser, packing a lot more muscle onto his frame. And that's the classic Apollonian versus Herculean dichotomy right there. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up. Arnold talks about it a bit in his Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. So yeah, they all look fantastic, but I can't not give it to Buchanan. He just looks too sensational. The lat spread is tougher to call. Buchanan doesn't have the advantage now of those awesome arms, and his legs kind of let him down standing next to someone like Gaspari. He still has that elegant look, but I, I could see if the judges would side with Rich on this one for all that extra muscularity. And Labrada, again, looks like a statue over there, so this one's really hard. If I'm being objective, though, I would have to give it to Gaspari, even though I personally prefer the other two physiques more. But usually mass plus conditioning prevails, and Gaspari wins by that criteria. Brian looks great here once again in the side chest. We're seeing a lot of roundness, and I'd probably give him the nod on this one, because Gaspari just doesn't show a whole lot of detail or separation in this pose. Turning to the rear, we'll see if Buchanan can pull this one off as well as he could from the front. Or maybe we won't, since the cameraman screwed us over. Okay, so we didn't get a good look at it, but based on the upper body alone, I would still have to side with Buchanan, since his arms and shoulders were bigger and better than Rich's. Their backs were fairly comparable, though. Okay, the lat spread goes to Rich, however. Buchanan's back is way too smooth, and he doesn't look particularly wide even, which is surprising considering how great his taper looks from the front. Labrada is great, but he's basically a smaller version of Gaspari here, so Gaspari beats him with size. Side triceps also goes to Rich. Buchanan probably comes in second, though, as Lee Labrada is just giving up too much mass. And in the abs and thigh, Brian looks nice, but he's not flexing consistently, and every time he lets up, that sort of leaves the door wide open for Rich Gaspari. Okay, so all in all, Brian looked pretty dang good. He started out strong, but kind of appeared to fade there at the end. I'm not sure if that's because he was losing stamina, or if he just happened to be weaker in those latter poses, 
I suspect a bit of both. But anyway, guys, seems like a pretty convincing victory by Lee Haney to me. Even though he was a little weak through the legs, especially those hamstrings and calves, which left a lot to be desired, his upper body was so overwhelming that he pretty much stomped the competition in like four out of the seven mandatories. He had the size, the stature, the skillful posing, and the polished detail to boot. So it was a relatively straightforward decision as far as these things go. Okay, and that's going to do it for this one. Let me know if you guys want to see more 80s Olympias like this, and I'll try and dig up some more footage. But until the next time, thank you for watching. This is the Tominator signing off, and I'll be back.